I still remember reading refactoring uh, for the first time. I had a few years of experience, but something clicked. Like I finally saw what good code could actually look like. This is what those books give me clarity. Not instant skills, but a new way of thinking. So today, I want to share the books that shape how I code, how I think, and how I work. People often ask how to get better as a developer, not just how to write code, but how to grow over time. But for me, reading has always been a turning point. The best books uh, don't just uh, you know teaching techniques, they help you to see things differently. And today I'd like to share a few books that changed my perspectives. So let's get into them. The first book is uh, Refactoring by Martin Fowler. This book is all about improve uh, internal structure of your code without changing what it does. Martin Fowler calls these small changes refactoring, like extracting function, rename variable, or replace condition with uh, polymorphism. Each change is small and safe. And in this second edition, uh, the example are in JavaScript, I think it's more accessible. And by the way, this very copy, I got a signature from Martin himself when we had a catch up earlier this year in Melbourne. And when I first read it, I realized that for the first time, clean code isn't magic. It's a series of deliberate thoughtful changes. This book told me to see mass code as something I could ship. Particularly if you're a beginner, you probably will see a lot of very useful tips you can apply right into your code today. And if you have some experience already, you probably will find something you have already been doing, but you just don't have a clear name for it. And I think the vocabulary Martin used in this book is very helpful. It distilled some vocabulary we can share with other devs. And the second book is Clean Code by Robert Martin or Uncle Bob. Probably the most quoted book on writing readable code and it's popular for a reason. Uncle Bob emphasized things like uh, meaningful names, small functions, one level of abstraction in each function, avoid commits in fear of clarity. It's full of examples. I don't have a hard copy in my hand, but I do have it in my Kindle and um, I do read them every now and then. What stuck with me is this. Writing clean code isn't being clever. It's all about making your code easy to read, especially by someone else in your team, or in many cases, the someone is the future you. And the third book is also from Uncle Bob, The Clean Coder. This one is now about coding. It's about how you behave as a professional. Topics like uh, saying no when you need to, testing your code, taking responsibility for your work, manage your time and energy. So if you can take away only one thing from that book, that would be say no when you need to. That I just stuck in my mind even today. Too often that we have to negotiate with managers that they are pushing a hard deadline. And uh, most of the time, the developer will, you know, give up and finally say, okay, well, we can do that. But the trade-off is the quality normally. That's something you should avoid as a professional developer. When I first read it, it feels different. It wasn't telling me what uh, code to write. It was teaching me how to show up every day as a developer people can you know, trust and can count on. It's not something you learn uh, from tutorial. So it's basically tell you to be a professional developer. And the first one is Continuous Delivery by Jace Hammer and David Fairley. This one zoomed out from code to the entire delivery pipeline. It's about automating everything, the build, the test, deployment. Uh, so release software becomes a no event. It's as simple as a button click. What really clicked for me is that delivery isn't a separate phrase. It's part of how we write software. Yeah, again, I don't have a hard copy to show you today, but I do have read the Chinese translation a few years back, and I also have the English version in my Kindle. So the book helped me 
see the full picture from commit to production and how everything we do connect back to delivery value. I think the value part is most of developers who tend to not see very clearly when they are, you know, hands down to just writing code. But that's fundamentally why the software exists um, in the first place. And the fifth book I like to recommend is the Software Engineering at Google. So if you are particularly interested in build software in large organizations, you know, working with people in a big company, this book is very helpful. It's covered a lot of core topics like the culture, how to do the code reviews, like how to treat other team members respectfully. It has tools like uh, how to do the testing, how to gradually deprecate a piece of software, how to document, and also it's introduced a few tools they are using in Google. So if you want to work in a you know, bigger company or you are already, it's a very good solid reference book. But be aware that not every company is Google, obviously. So there may be tools or cultures that are not really fit to your very scenario. And also I got a few bonus books. The first one is Head First Design Patterns. This was my first intro to design patterns. It's visual, it's fun, and it's used uh, real world problems to explain concepts like observers, strategy patterns, command patterns, uh, factories. It's a great way to learn if you from the object oriented uh, background. It's very interesting. I really recommend that if you are new to programming. It's a very uh, informative and um, a fun book to read. And another one is kind of outdated a little bit. It's called The Productive Programmer by Neil Ford. This is the one that a little bit outdated. But I think the idea in the book is very helpful. The two Neil introduced in the book, my outdated, for example, he mentioned the shortcuts in the browser. You don't have to type the www, but this thing is long gone, right? We don't have that. Every browser have already built in the functionality. But other than that, it's a very a good book. It, the idea in it, like uh, you should have a build script whenever you have a project uh, that can automate the tasks like a compile, uh, you know, link. Those ideas are still relevant today. Things like cable driven navigation, automation, the idea of floor as a developer. If you find a copy, it's, it's a nice read. Uh, just uh, maybe skip the part about the older tools. So none of those books give me shortcuts. Uh, they didn't promise me to become a you know, 10 times developer, but they changed the way I see code or software development uh, overall. They help me to build habits uh, that last and they help me to grow quietly over time. If you look to level up, pick one book, read it slowly, apply as you go and come back later for the next one. If you enjoyed this, I think you will like some of my other videos, especially the ones where I work through test-driven development, how I refactor real code only with keyboard shortcuts. They are practical, hands-on, and built on a top of simple same principles that those book taught me. Go check them out. I will link them uh, in a screen somewhere or in a description below as well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next time.